After two months, Fast Fusion has released a major update, version 3.4.0. This update primarily focuses on significantly improving face swapping speed and optimizing the face swapping experience. In this video, I will explain each major update in detail for everyone. The first update introduces single pass frame processing. This update significantly improves our face swapping speed. In what specific ways? Let's look at a comparison between the old and new versions. So let's run a simple test. Using the same source material, the same parameter settings, and with both face swapper and face enhancer enabled. Two functions. What's the speed difference between the old and new versions? First, let's look at the old version. The old version takes the same clip and processes it into steps, face swapper and face enhancer, to steps for processing. But with the new version, the new version directly combines the two steps into a single step for processing. So, how do their speeds compare? We can see the old version took 33.93 seconds but the new version only took 16.7 seconds. This is undoubtedly a huge improvement in speed. Nice. Let's look at the next update. Process inference on multiple execution devices. This means if you have multiple graphics cards, you can now use them simultaneously to process your face swap. This also undoubtedly speeds up your face swapping. Next, the third item added a side-by-side -side preview mode and preview resolution. This is an update I particularly like. It greatly optimizes the face swapping experience. Let's see what the preview in the old version was like. It's like this. In this case, you can't see a before and after comparison. Let's see what the new version is like. The new version adds a preview mode selection. Default is the same as the old version, but it has a new frame by frame mode, which is a comparison between frames. The frame before the swap is on the left, and the frame after the swap is on the right, and there's a face by face for a before and after comparison. The face before the swap is on the left, and the face after the swap is on the right. This way, we can clearly observe the effect of the face swap. It also adds an option for preview resolution. This means the resolution here can be adjusted. We can see after setting it to 512, the resolution here is clearly lower. Let's look at the next update. Introduce expression parameter. In the new version, if we enable expression restore, we can see it adds an expression restore region. This function allows you to control which part of the expression you want to restore. On to the next update. Improved webcam experience and performance. This is mainly for live streaming face swap projects. There aren't any very important updates here, so we'll just skip it. Next, reintroduce the unit. Face detector. Let's look at the new versions. Newly introduced face detector. It's here in the face detector model section, so I've also put up a comparison chart of these face detector models. I've put it up. Everyone can take a look. The main thing about unit is that it's very lightweight. Its performance isn't the best. Let's move on to the next update. Add voice extractor model argument. It's here in the left, under the face swapper weight. Samely, I've also put up a comparison chart of these voice extractor models. Let's move on to the next update. Migrated arc face converter 2. This is quite low level, so we'll skip it. Next. Use face swapper weight to balance the source and target. This update is mainly reflected. When we enable the face swapper function in the face swapper section, compared to the old version, we now have a face swapper weight parameter to control. It's mainly used to control the face swap effect. The higher you set it, the more it resembles the swapped face. The lower you set it, the more it resembles the original face. Now, let's look at the next update. Introduce benchmark model. Choose between warm and cold cache. This is mainly for benchmarking purposes, so we can skip it. Next, introduce many for the face occluder model parameter. The update in this item is reflected. In our face occluder model, there's a new option here called many. So, what does this many do? Previously, we might just select a single option, like Sheg 1 or Sheg 2. But if you select many, it will enable Sheg 1 
2, and 3 simultaneously. The three models will be enabled at the same time, and it will combine the results from these three models. As the final result, that's the function of many. Let's look at the next item. Replace output resolution with relative output scale. So, in the old version, we had an output video resolution on the left side, which allowed us to control and select a value. But in the new version, we can see that item has become output video scale. This means you can scale the video's resolution by a certain factor. This way, compared to the old version, we can achieve more fine-grained control because this video scale can have decimal points 2.2x, 2.3x, 2.5x. But with the old version, it could only scale by an integer factor. For example, if my video resolution is 360p now, and I scale it up by 2x, then my output video will become 360 times 2 equals 720p. That's what it means. Let's look at the next update. Add libx to 64 RGB to avoid color shift. This update is reflected in the new versions, output video encoder section. We can see there is a new libx to 64 RGB option. Let's look at the next update. Added support for Wimber UM video format. This update means we can now also support uploading Wimber UM format videos. Next item, experimental support for MyGraphs execution Provier. This is quite low level. We'll skip it. Next, log model information in debug mode. We rarely use this debug mode. Regular users don't pay much attention to it, so we can skip it too. Next, remove the execution queue count parameter. In the old version, on the left side, you can see, below the execution thread count, there was an execution queue count. But in the new version of the software, below the execution thread count, we find that this execution queue count is gone. So why was this parameter removed? It's because the developers found that this parameter wasn't very useful. We usually just adjust the execution thread count to achieve the effect of controlling the face swapping speed. On to the next update. Removed score and classifier items from the face debugger. So, in the old version, if we open the face debugger function, we could see we had face detector score, face landmarker score, and also age, gender, and race options. Now, in the new version of the software, if we also enable the face debugger function, we can see in the face debugger options here that those options we just mentioned are gone. So why were these options removed? I won't go into too much detail here. Simply put, these options were not very useful. Let's look at the next update. Fixed headless runtime crash when passing an invalid output path and fixed the demographic filter for mutilated faces. These two updates are not very important for us, so we'll skip them as well. So, that's all the updates for version 3.4.0. I mainly explained the updates that are more important for us as users. As for those updates that are not so important for users, but might be important for developers. I just skipped them. While making this video, FastFusion was updated to 3.4.1. It mainly fixes some bugs from the 3.4.0 update. There are no major new feature updates, so I won't be explaining it. If you all feel that this video was helpful to you, remember to like and follow. It really means a lot to me.